Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at on this fine Thursday, 8.34 a.m. California time here where I'm at. March 6, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows a uh, 6.3 earthquake, it looks like, down across the Chile area. Uh, that earthquake just coming in. It is showing up on the seismograph stations there, so it's a legit earthquake. A little uncertain on the uh, actual magnitude, though, because the uh, EMSC are the folks reporting it. And uh, USGS, not so much. Let's double-check that and see if they've included it yet. They have not. So a little behind here on the scheduling or on the uh, uh, reporting of earthquake activity. I'm sure they'll jump on that, but uh, either way, that's a, a decent earthquake. If that is indeed a legit magnitude there for a 6.3 along the Peru Chile Trench, we'll check back here in uh, just a minute on that earthquake. Uh, starting off here uh, across the states, any more earthquakes happening up in Seattle? Uh, a couple smaller ones here outside the um, San Juan Islands area. This is a region that had... Uh, some earthquake activity here within the last few days. About 51 earthquakes now in total tally. Um, and some of these magnitudes, though, are awfully strange. They're 0 0.1, 0 0.0. I mean, it's almost like a code, so to speak, of uh, magnitude numbers. It just doesn't look legit, like those are actual magnitudes. There's some type of weird sequence of numbers in there. But 4.5 struck here. Uh, just about three days ago near the Orcas Island, Washington region. Felt fairly broadly across the area. And then, of course, yesterday's event down there across uh, Blinn. It looks like Blinn, Washington, outside of Seattle. Uh, 3.9 coming into that region there yesterday, which is uh, southwest of the San Juan Islands area where a number of earthquakes have been hitting. So just fairly active out here across Seattle recently. Um, well, the Puget Sound, I should say. Seattle, fault system, a number of earthquakes as well on the west side and the east side of that uh, very dangerous fault system that goes directly underneath Seattle. Uh, Northern California here, you got one earthquake this morning, a 2.7. Now, that's uh, pretty shallow, 5.3 miles uh, underneath that area. Nothing big happening across Northern California for now. The rest of California out here, well, the 2.5 model removes all the earthquakes. So all of these are microquakes out here across Southern California. Nothing big, no unusual swarming to note there across Southern California for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up. But as always, I do want to double check. By the way, uh, this well, this was a trimmer from a couple days ago. Yesterday's trimmer uh, was not that big of a deal. Uh, let's go look at the Yellowstone overview here real quick. See if there's anything happening at Yellowstone. And I don't see anything. It looks like maybe there was one earthquake here yesterday afternoon. But local time is up. This is matching the date. This is all current data. Um, I don't see any uh, unusual activity there across Yellowstone. There's the earthquake coming in there from uh, the USGS now. A little bit of a downgrade from a 6.3 to a 6.1. Either way, that's a uh, still a decent earthquake into the Peru-Chile Trench. Uh, historical data out here. Goodness, this is one of the most active areas on the planet for large earthquake activity and just earthquake activity in general. Major subduction zone here starts from the uh, northern area of South America all the way down south here to the Peru-Chile or southern end of the Peru-Chile Trench right about here. So that's, uh, actually, I, you know, I could say it's quite common to see a six-pointer out here. Uh, but it's been a little while. Of course, further down south across uh, the area of Chile, outside of Santiago, is where the world's biggest earthquake struck. Back in 1961, the 9.5, uh, 9 the Great Chilean Earthquake, that was a big one. And it'll ultimately produce a tsunami as well. So... Uh, just for now, 6-pointer, 6 6.1, 58 miles deep here underneath this area. Looks like yesterday within the same region, a 4.2 struck a little bit deeper. So you may want to keep an eye on that region for maybe possibly something larger. 6.1 is at least uh, a very minimal earthquake that it can uh, produce there on that subduction zone. 
There's the last 24 hours of uh, all the magnitudes as well. And it does look like it's been centered around that uh, center portion of the Prucelli Trench where the six-pointer just struck. So keep an eye on it. May see some further large-scale activity happening there. Uh, the rest of the globe, or at least the flat-scale model Earth, New Zealand. Some more earthquake activity happening out here outside of Wellington, around the um, just outside the Cook Strait area. Now, this is just the latest in a series of earthquakes that have struck out here across the region. The majority of the quakes have been roughly around the tip of the South Island area up southward along the Alpine Fault there off the, on the plate boundary. But uh, that um, is more so than normal. So I'm going to run over and check out the uh, GeoNet servers here real quick. See what they're reporting. Three hours ago was at 4.5, 55 kilometers deep. Uh, 3.5, a little bit further south, 2.9 from yesterday. But there's a lot of fours and uh, even a couple of fives out there yesterday along the South Island area in general. Just most of it there on the plate boundary, but that five-pointer struck off of it and inland away from the plate boundary. So things are you know, quite strained out there across the uh, New Zealand area. We'll check out the earthquake drums here real quick. And there's that most recent 4.5. There's some of yesterday's events there on the map. A couple of the newer events down south. We're on a um, newer time frame down south here across South Island. So things are, you know, that's quite active. It's unusual to see a large uptick like that with really no main quake. You know, there hasn't, there hasn't been a, um, like a seven or six pointer that caused a bunch of these fours and fives it's just a sequence of events so uh, that, that's um, odd but it also could be telling us that things might be getting ready to see something bigger out here so we'll just keep an eye there across the area of new zealand it's a lot of activity all right uh, back to the map here Go over and check out the Earthquake 3D globe, see if there's anything standing out. Uh, some deeper activity once again across Japan. Well, I should say north of Japan here across the Kuro Kamchatka. Uh, two deep earthquakes here. One from yesterday, a 4.1, 323 miles deep here underneath the Sea of Osk area. Uh, more recent, 4.7, larger but shallower. So watch the Kuro Kamchatka Trench. It's a major subduction zone. Um, you can see that trench zone out here. This thing can produce nine pointers. Uh, the last nine pointer was down here across Japan. That was back in 2011. And uh, this area has potential to produce a mega quake. And I've been mentioning it here for probably the past year or so, thinking that uh, things are going to pop out here pretty soon. Uh, but so far, it's been holding steady. But these deeper earthquakes. Or a good indicator here of the uh, strain that's being built out here across the subduction zone of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench. So keep an eye on that, folks. That uh, may very well be where, where we see our eight-pointer. Alaska fairly quiet up there. A couple smaller microquakes across the area. Nothing big happening. Um, Typical movement here across the uh, Maluka Sea area, the Indonesia Islands region. Nothing on the Nankai Trough. Some of that activity from yesterday. Um, some 4.0 4 movement. So keep an eye on that. That's another area that's primed for some mega quake. Uh, Indian Ocean pretty uh, active out here. Let's see USGS uh, reporting that one earthquake from yesterday. But there's been a number of earthquakes out there in that fracture boundary. Uh, let's see, Santorini area of Greece, as far as volcano activity goes, doesn't look like there's a whole lot, but we'll double check, make sure. Santorini, Colombo, uh, there's the current earthquake swarm. Got about uh, 487 earthquakes in the region in the last week. Uh, the latest earthquake here, well, nine minutes ago, these guys are reporting a 3.2 off the east coast there of North Island. Mm, 
Must be that newer quake there. And that's more than likely associated with the, uh, could be the Hikurangi subduction zone, southern end there. So just definitely, uh, that's quite active. All right, so 1.9 in this area, 2.1. I'm not seeing anything big in the last few hours. Couple twos in there. Uh, well, there was one 3.5 today. So we'll go double check the uh, geophysics site here, see if we have uh, the recorded view of that three pointer. There it is. Three pointer obviously going to stand out much uh, more prominent here on the seismograph map compared to these other two pointers and some of the one pointers out there. So still going. Still getting uh, probably around 100 earthquakes, 80 to 100 earthquakes per day out here across the Santorini area. Uh, it has not let up completely, so things are uh, still active out there. Where it's leading to, who knows? Something we got to watch closely. All right, uh, let's go check out space weather, see if anything's happening out here in the sun. Actually, pretty much flatlined out here, it looks like. If you look on the uh, chart, we actually had a uh, period of time where we were down into the B flare category. I call that the boring class because of the lack of uh, flaring. Obviously, CM and X flare absent of recent flares. And I don't think we're going to see anything here in near term. I'm forecasting a 1% or less. These guys have a 10%. I know Kevin's taking a break from this page. Uh, so that may be a manual input that he's uh, having to adjust here. But 10% uh, is not likely at all out there on the sun. M flare, 45% uh, chance. It's Let's go take a look here at the magnetogram image, see what we have for our possibilities of any flaring. Waiting for this one to load. It's been a little slow, but it loaded. There we have it. Whoop de doo. <laughs> There's not a whole lot out here, folks. Um, some say that solar maximum has already peaked, that it peaked back in uh, the end of 2024. Now, the official model here was that uh, we're supposed to peak out in solar maximum around June of this year, which is in, you know, about three months. Um, but I guess we'll have to see. And what I find odd is the majority of these sunspots out here um, throughout solar maximum over the last couple of years has been uh, on the southern hemisphere of the sun as far as the big ones go. Now, whether that's going to fill in up north or not uh, in the near term, I don't know. It, something we'll have to watch, but there's not a whole lot. If you look at this, there's not a whole lot of complexity within the sunspot core. Um, it is facing Earth. It's got a massive, massive coverage area, but uh, in close proximity as far as these magnetic structures go, I don't see it. Uh, might see a C flare or two popping off, uh, maybe from this area down here. But uh, aside from that, it looks uh, pretty quiet out there on the sun. No major roars in the forecast. The Aurora Oval forecast there, pretty quiet. So um, we'll just take what the sun gives us here. And that's, right now, not a whole lot. As far as any close approach asteroids go, we'll give that a quick glance. And, uh, man, that's... A fairly big one fairly close as well in terms of that of a big one coming that close it's still reasonable reasonably safe 337 thousand miles by the way the average distance here between the earth and the moon is about 239 thousand so on average that is outside of the earth moon distance uh, aside from that millions of miles away for the rest of those uh, a pretty large asteroid, 100, 100 foot or so. All right, Storm Prediction Center for uh, severe weather. Got uh, just some general thunderstorm activity out here across California and into the Four Corners. Really not expecting any major severe weather 
here in the coming, at least in the next couple days. Uh, put that in motion here, and uh, storm after storm will be hitting California with some, um, some pretty powerful systems out there as well. Look at those rainfall accumulation uh, rates right over, right over my house. So it's going to be a pretty wet one. Put that in motion here. Southern California get in, going to get in on the action as well. Um, as we head towards uh, middle of March, a little interesting pattern here. Got some colder air dipping back down across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, and these have not been um, loaded up yet. So we'll have to check back a little bit later on the extended forecast as far as any major patterns go. But it does look like California is going to have a super wet March. And that is okay by me. I say bring it on. All right, uh, let's see, double check, 6.1, holding steady at that magnitude, 58 miles deep, seismograph stations out there. Um, let's see here, yeah, pretty quiet. That right here, that reading that you see on China Lake and Yellowstone at roughly the same time is more than likely a signal from the 6.1 that struck here just a short time ago. 6.1 up here, you can barely see it. That's the ending of the uh, large signature that signature from the six pointer. Uh, but it happened a little bit back here. So sometimes those uh, large earthquake six pointers will show up on some of these seismograph stations. It looks like it did as well across the Japan uh, station. You might see some uh, surface waves potentially. Uh, but for now, folks, uh, we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later. Keep an eye on the mentioned regions, New Zealand specifically, just because of all that activity recently and a uh, cluster of quakes here across the Chile area. That uh, could be seeing some further larger movement here soon. Have a good day. We'll see you guys back out here for the Thursday Thursday night update. Take care.